We are back just 15 minutes away from the president's first address to the nation from the Oval Office. Joining me now, my colleague, Rachel Maddow. Hi, Chris. We'll be taking over the coverage at the top of the hour. Um, it, I was just talking to Brian Williams and Nicole Wallace. It's a strange night because it's a familiar genre in a very unfamiliar circumstance. Yes. I mean, we have, <laughs> we have seen this is one of the things that presidents do. Right. They give primetime addresses to the nation on matters of their own choosing from the Oval Office. And it usually means there's something that's a really big deal or there's a really big persuasive case that the president needs to make. And in this case, we've gone two years without the president doing this thus far. He doesn't have much of a history of formal speeches of any kind, even though he's been president for two years. And I don't, I don't know what to, I don't know if this is going to be a normal speech. Right. There is such a thing as a normal Oval right. Office address. I don't know if that's the idea or if this is supposed to, you know, this is supposed to be kind of a shock and awe political move. Well, and with him, we've also seen him move between the genres of Donald Trump rally, Donald Trump off the cuff, and then like he'll occasionally do a normal speech. Mm -hmm. And then that's just like someone wrote that. <laughs> and it yeah. got run through prompter, and it means nothing because it, that was just a thing that someone put and up. And often back. after he does that, he will rebut it himself. Literally right? the next day. <laughs> say, well, yeah, they had that. They right. told me to say that. But yeah. I mean, I think the most, to me, the, cru the crucial thing and the most important thing to understand about this just this debate about the wall is that it is not a real policy, right? It's, it's not like cutting the corporate tax rate or repealing Obamacare or appointing conservative judges. It was never part of any Republican agenda before Donald Trump. The wall was just a thing that he said on the campaign trail over and over again. And the reason why he started saying it, we now know, is that he used it as a kind of memory trick. One of the president's early aides, Sam Numberg, telling the New York Times that Trump's, quote, political advisors landed on the idea of a border wall as a mnemonic device of sorts, a way to make sure their candidate, who hated reading from a script, but loved boasting about himself and his talents as a builder, <laughs> would remember to talk about getting tough on immigration. And sure enough, the wall was right there on day one when he announced his run for president. I would build a great wall, and nobody builds walls better than me, believe me. And I'll build them very inexpensively. I will build a great, great wall on our southern border, and I will have Mexico pay for that wall. There it is, day one. And then as Donald Trump's central theme took off, an America under threat from scary immigrant invaders, the wall was its core motif. It was the imaginary symbol of his pledge to hold the invaders at bay, preserve the country from change and degradation. Again, it was not an actual policy to make a plan to build a real physical barrier or get Mexico to pay for it. The wall morphed from a mnemonic device into an applause line, and the president himself fully recognized that's what it was. Listen to what he told the New York Times editorial board in January 2016. If my speeches ever get a little off, I just go, we will build a wall. You know, if it gets a little boring, if I see people starting to sort of maybe thinking about leaving, I can sort of tell the audience, I just say, we will build the wall. And they go nuts. And the wall, Mexico will pay for the wall. And he was right. The wall worked every single time. Build the wall. Build the wall. Build the wall. Build the wall. It will. Oh, we'll build it. We'll build it. Who's going to pay for it? The president understood how important the wall was as a totem for his campaign, and he immediately, immediately understood the trouble he faced once that symbolism ran up against the reality of governing. This is from his first call with the Mex president of Mexico after taking office, a transcript of which was leaked to the Washington Post. Quote, the fact is uh, we are both in a little bit of a political bind because I have to have Mexico pay for the wall. I have to. I've been talking about it for a two-year period. It's the president talking to the Mexican president, explaining that he's screwed because he made a promise he can't deliver on. Of course, Mexico was never going to pay for the wall. Like the wall itself, that was never an actual policy. And because none of it was ever real, the president's own party, which controlled Congress for the first two years of his administration, didn't want to pay for the wall either. Under one party rule, they could, in theory, have passed the funding. But they didn't because you cannot fund an applause line. So now with House Democrats to blame for standing in his way, the president is holding the government hostage in an effort to force his wall into being. But I, I think that leads to what the actual drama is of tonight's primetime speech uh, from the president from the Oval Office. I mean, 
If that's where this comes from, right, if that's the origin story, if this, as Sam Nunberg says, this was birthed as an effort to get the president to remember to talk about immigration without writing something on his hand, I mean, is tonight just a new stage for him to do the same thing he has been doing as an applause line for years now? Or are they doing this tonight from the Oval Office, going big like this, because they're signifying that something new is going to happen. They're about to change this whole idea into something that they actually want to pursue as real policy rather than just beating it for effect, right? I think tonight you're going to be able to tell, and fairly quickly, um, based on whether or not the president um, tries something new, whether he tries to make persuasive arguments that are designed to win over Congress to some sort of real plan associated with all this rhetoric, or does he just keep saying the same untrue and fantastical alternate reality things that he's been saying all along? I think that is why it's worth watching the president tonight. And I think that's what is worth watching for. Does he keep lying about this thing? Uh, and if so, how? Because the lies that he's been telling about it show that it's never intended to be a real thing. If he stops lying about it and actually starts trying to persuade people about it with truthful, rational arguments that are relevant to the point at hand, that will be something new. And so therefore, I think it's important to watch for the kinds of lies that he usually tells. I think there's two categories. The first ones are ones that are totally rational, things that would appear to make sense if they were based in truth which they are not. Uh, the first type of lies he tends to tell about the border and the wall are lies that are at least rationally related to the theoretical idea of a wall, things that might make sense as part of a real argument if they were based in truth, but they're not. This first category of lies he likes to tell, uh, I call them rational but false threat inflation. So these are lies like, there's terrorists streaming across the southern border. That is one assertion that the administration has tripled down on in recent days. Terrorists are streaming into this country by the thousands over the southern, southern border. NBC News this week reports that the number of suspected terrorists caught at the southern border from fall 2017 to spring 2018 is not in the thousands, as the administration has been saying. It's six. Not 600, not 6,000, just six. That said, this is the kind of thing where if you're a member of the Trump administration and you, you say this thing about mass numbers of terrorists coming over the border, you say it over and over again, it might sound convincing enough to persuade someone who didn't know better that yes, maybe a huge border wall would make sense, but of course, the assertion itself is false. Another one of these rational but false threat inflation threat inflation lies, uh, is their assertion that drugs are pouring into the country uh, and a border wall, once it was built, would stop drugs from continuing to pour into this country. If you ask the DEA, if you even ask Trump's former Homeland Security Secretary about this, they'll tell you the vast majority of drugs entering the U.S. come through routes other than illegal southern border crossings. They come through legal ports of entry. They come through other ports, uh, other forms of smuggling, including through the mail from China. A big border wall stretching the length of the Mexico-U.S. border wouldn't change any of that. It's the same thing with Trump's assertions that immigrants bring crime and disease with them across the southern border. That would be a rational argument, maybe, if it weren't false. Crime rates among native-born Americans are higher than those for immigrants. Mexico actually has higher rates of vaccination than the United States does now. But again, falsely inflating that threat, as they have done on all of those points, that's at least a rational way to try to scaremonger people into supporting a wall that will actually do nothing to solve any of those purported problems. But then there's the other kinds of lies our president has frequently told about this wall and, and the problems it's supposed to solve. And these are the ones that I think are going to make tonight almost a surreal experience if he keeps going there. Because these are the falsehoods. These aren't the ones that, that, that might be rationally persuasive if they were true, like these other ones. The thing that really, I think, sets the wall stuff apart is what I call his magical nonsense. <laughs> it's the stuff that betrays the fact that this really was all just invented to make people laugh and applaud at his rallies. And now, as Chris says, they're trying to reverse engineer it into something that makes sense when it doesn't. So these are the kinds of self-contradicting, nonsensical assertions that you have to make when you're trying to convince your neighbor that not only do unicorns exist, but you have one, and they do too. And actually, your unicorns are best friends who play unicorn games together all day long. Can't you see them? I mean, these are the kinds of presidential lies like, the wall has already been built. Is he going to say that tonight? I mean, this is perhaps, 
perhaps one of Trump's favorite lies in pursuit of building the wall and in arguing the need for a government shutdown over it because the wall is already being built. Construction is underway. Last month, he repeated this lie eight times in one single day. It's completely nonsensical, right? We need to build a wall. The wall is already built. But he tells this lie because it makes the idea of a border wall sort of a live issue. It gives people the sense that you still need to be engaged in the kinetic drama and fighting over the border wall because it's a real thing. How real is it? Well, it's already being built. I mean, that's how you know that this fight over funding for the wall, this government shutdown, is not actually for a real thing, right? You can't have an end of the world fight about needing money to build the wall while also arguing that the wall is already built. It's magical nonsense. And in fact, how does it make sense to have an end of the world fight about needing American taxpayer money to build the wall when Mexico is paying for the wall? I mean, even now, during the shutdown over border wall funding, the president is still claiming that Mexico is paying for the wall. And so U.S. taxpayers must pay for the wall? Or the government gets it? I mean, we need to fund this wall that Mexico is funding? I mean, this is the magical nonsense part that will be interesting to see if he goes to tonight. Right? There, there are these continued varied assertions about what this, this, this phantom wall that may or may not have built, may or may not have already been built, what it actually looks like. Right? Is the wall concrete? Is the wall steel? Is it in fact see-through steel, as the president asserted this past month? I mean, the magical nonsense part of this is like, we have to shut down the government because the Democrats refuse to pay for the concrete wall or the see-through steel that is already built and that Mexico is paying for, so we don't have to pay for it. I mean, that nonsense stuff is how he has tried to conduct the argument, which I think gives lie to Chris's thesis that this was never intended to be a real policy in the first place. So what are we going to get tonight? Are we going to get more magical nonsense, more of this fictional applause line stuff? Or are we going to get more of the made-up threat inflation that isn't magic, it just isn't true? Or might he change tack? If he gives up all of those lies, then he may actually be trying to get a wall built. Maybe. We'll see. If he sticks with all this fiction, though, I think we know that this is just the same campaign stunt, this time in a really nice room in the White House instead of in some airplane hangar uh, in front of people in red hats. It's, you know, the contradictory nature of it is what makes this so, such a bizarre and sort of frustrating news event to cover. Mm. Because when you say to people, why is the government shut down? There is no clear answer because the president keeps changing what the metaphysical object at the core of the wall mythology is. Because we is. need a wall. I just heard the president argue right. that the wall is built. And also, I could just declare in a state of emergency, I don't actually need, you know, Mexico will pay for it, and I actually don't need Congress, and I could build it myself, and I could have DOD. Remember the tweet about, I can have the Department of Defense build it. Mm -hmm. So, but the thing is that there's a real actual government shutdown over this. Yeah. That, again, there's an equilibrium that is, has to be reached in which the government shutdown has to end. I mean, that's the backdrop to all of this that we're getting, that he has ended up in this position tonight giving this Oval Office address, I think out of sort of some desperation, while the actual people who work for the federal government are not getting paid. Yeah, and the president has asserted somewhat um, uh, casually that he'd be happy if the shutdown went on for years. Um, and that sounds like crazy talk again. That just sounds like nonsensical talk. Like the U.S. government being shut down for years is something that is inconceivable both in terms of the negative impact on the country but also it's inconceivable as a political reality right, right. that congress would allow that to happen but does he know that that's nonsensical i mean does he know that steel isn't see-through does he know that mexico isn't both paying for the wall and not paying for the wall so here i've been wrestling with this question which is why when the second producer who worked on that brought to me the new york times interview i found it so fascinating the transcript of him calling up peña nieto the mm -hmm. mexican president saying buddy I'm screwed here. Mm -hmm. Suggest to me that he, he is in on the con. Yeah. Because what you see, and we should never should have seen that. I mean, it is crazy and rare, almost unprecedented, that that kind of call gets leaked. A call between foreign leaders, the transcript of which gets leaked to the press. Like, Nuts. Yeah. And they have no expectation that anyone is listening to that other than the person on the other line and staffers. The fact that he says that there says to me that he realizes day one with his hand on the Bible, wow. I have written a check that I cannot possibly cap. I read that transcript again today, too. And what's amazing is that Peña Nieto is saying, you know, Mr. President, you know that Mexico yeah. will never pay for the wall. That is never going to happen. And the initial response from Trump to that is, you cannot tell the press that. You cannot tell the press that. Like, help me maintain Keep this the magic fiction. magic nonsense going. Yes. 
Because, like we'll be we'll be collaborators on the magic nonsense. So the question, I mean, maybe the way out of this is that Democrats can come up with a way, or, or actually makes, makes more sense if Republicans come up with a way to just allow Trump to declare that he won and he got the money and the wall is being built. Just let him have his unicorn. Just say it's true when it's not. He can campaign on it all he wants. I'm not sure that he, it matters to him whether or not it actually I happens. I absolutely think if there is an out in which he basically uses DOD money to instruct them to start building some fencing on the very small sliver of the border that is actually DOD property. And they never do it. Right. They don't even <laughs> yes. have to do it. They yes. have to start doing it. Um, that they will... That that is the that is the most natural out here. Yeah. The most natural out is a kind of emperor's new clothes, where the wall gets built, and the government gets to reopen because the wall is being built because it was never really a wall to begin with. And none of that's true, but we all just agree right. to say it so that the issue goes away and the government can re, can reopen. Uh, Rachel, it's been great to have you here on All In. Come by any time. Thank you. It has been, uh, as you say, it's sort of a strange news day, but it's nice to be here with you, my friend. All right. We are less than two minutes from this president's primetime address in the Oval Office. And so the Rachel Maddow Show starts right now. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.